Hi, this is Dr. Wade Finley. I'm really excited to talk to you today about something that I've been meaning to speak about and speak to for such a very long time, and this is mortality rate and what we can learn from the Spanish flu and different healthcare disciplines that teach us about how healthcare can influence mortality rate. Well, first of all, I have nothing negative to say about our wonderful medical profession and what it's doing trying to overcome this pandemic. And they're doing everything they can to do their job to maintain health in a very, very difficult time. So kudos to the medical profession and all of the people that are involved, the nurses, the nurse practitioners, the medical doctors, the assistants, as well as the researchers trying to get a hold of this curve that keeps on going up. So uh, what I would like to do is talk to you about some interesting facts that have uh, been re that are related directly to pandemics and in our country specifically, because there is going to be a new normal. And this is a huge wake up call as far as how our healthcare delivery systems look and are teaching us what health is and what health is not. So health is not just the absence of disease. Health and optimal health is much, much more than that. So uh, just as a reflection on mortality rates with the Spanish flu, we might find that this mortality rate with different health disciplines is consistent with the coronavirus. Now, these are alarming statistics, and I was completely blown away when I learned of them a few months back when this all started going on. So what I am going to about to embark on here is some very, very alarming statistics about the delivery of health. You see, medicine delivers health to overcome a disease, so they focus on the disease, whereas these other disciplines are different. They are treating the person with the disease and not the disease itself. So there's a huge difference there. And so these mortality rates are based upon statistical analysis uh, that occurred over time during the 1917 to 19, 1920 uh, Spanish flu. The mortality rates when it comes to medicine and medical treatment back then was cough syrup suppressions and fever uh, suppressants, they utilized aspirin, aspirin was big there, as well as uh, quinine. And the mortality rates for there, for this time, for medicine was very, very poor. It was a 30 to 40% mortality rate over all medical treatments. This is, includes hospitals, and it appears that the more dense the areas in which people were living, those hospitals did worth. For instance, in New York City had a 68 percent mortality rate on the Spanish flu. Oh, that's terrible. So let's get into some better news. So there was, during this time, there was actually three major disciplines of health trying to vie for uh, the head position on what health care should be for our entire nation. So each of one of these health care disciplines had had a hospital hospitalization and the statistics were being developed through all different types of health challenges back then. So the next one is homeopathy. Homeopathy was actually a division in medical medical treatment, but the homeopaths had different philosophy. It was treating the whole person and not just and the disease with homeopathy, which is very, very interesting because you actually homeopaths give the actual antidote as the ingredient that's causing the disease. So it's a very, very dilute uh, solution. So the immune system can react to this and recover, but they also were involved in, you know, very good lifestyle changes as well. So very, very healthy mind, healthy, healthy nutrition. So the chemistry is strong as well as a healthy body. Uh, so those statistics were just 1%. And they, the homeopaths, I'm going to read these statistics to you. The homeopaths had about about 30,000 30, different cases and with a 1% mortality rate. And that's a large, big difference between the medical uh, 
service versus the homeopathic service. So you can see the big, big gap there between what works and doesn't work. So you know, the osteopaths were also involved. And osteopaths back then, see osteopathy believes that circulation is the most viable and most profound part of your health care. And uh, the osteopaths had hospitals too. They had a really large sample there. They saw uh, 100 and over 110,000 patients during these times. And, and their mortality rate was just 0.25%. So that's not 25%, but 0.25%. And once again, homeopathy was more organically involved. It was involved with health as well uh, in, in the nutritional level, living a healthy lifestyle with basic foods, um, physical exercise, but once again, treating the whole person and not the disease. It's a big difference there. And they basically did manipulations and dietary changes. Very, very interesting. Now the third, the third discipline was the chiropractic profession. And the chiropractors had 46,000 known cases, treatments uh, of, of patients who had the, the Spanish flu. And chiropractic was really big on biological treatments, you know, in, 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 uh, incorporating nutrition, uh, cleansing programs, stable support systems uh, with a lifestyle of meditation and spirituality as well, as well as structural. The chiropractic differs in the osteopathic and chiropractic is more specific in how they lay their hands on the people to get the nerves flowing through the body. And it's not all the, uh, the byproduct of that is improved circulation, better neurological balance. And now we know that uh, the science behind that and when it comes to immune activity and immune support is huge to having your, your spine aligned. But the, the chiropractor saw about 46,500 patients and the mortality rate, and these are in the hospitals and across the board in the clinics uh, in the United States for all the states, was 0.0013% across the, across the board. And there was a study also done just in Iowa in which the medical profession gave up on those patients. There's about 300 patients that were basically, un unfortunately, unable to be treated by medical profession and they were in the hospitals. They were then transported to the chiropractic hospital thinking that they're gonna die, but the chiropractor saved 230 of those patients and there was just a little, uh, there's about 50 to 60 deaths uh, and that unresolved. So the point of this whole, this whole talk here is, is that we have to look at a different normal in, when it comes to healthcare delivery systems. Our nation is rated six, uh, 37th out of 39 industrialized nations when it comes to overall health. And we spend and we consume 67% of all the prescription medications in the entire world. So our country isn't doing so well as, as a healthcare. So I think that our curve is gonna to continue to go up. So if this were ever to happen again, and, and you can choose to use medical profession or chiropractic osteopathy, um, homeopathy, you know, that is up to you, but you really must search out a different paradigm of health now, for not only for you, but your the future generations because we're gonna come up more and more and more against these highly evolved viral conditions because our environment is so entrapped with toxicity and stress itself. And there's another talk that I'd like to get into about on the correlation between toxicity and, and these uh, epidemics and pandemics. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. My name is Dr. Wade Bentley. Please prescribe or uh, subscribe below on the bell. And there are other videos I've done uh, with um, uh, coronavirus specifically and nutritional uh, protocols that might help support your immune system specifically for this virus. Uh, there's a whole, uh, there's a series of three that I've done there. And I hope to get to know you somehow this way. So please log on, subscribe to my website or my YouTube channel, excuse me. And I hope to see you soon. Once again, this is Dr. Wade Binley signing off and stay healthy, be positive, take care.